show. Don't know where everyone at whatever time it is in the world. Welcome along to everything in the, the place where we discuss what is going on on the pitch mostly, but as well as some external factors as well. And we are all smiles from Bruno, apparently, for some reason. I've got no idea why, but we are reviewing Torino and we're looking forward to Lazio in the Coppa Italia. Let's just jump right into it and discuss Torino. I thought we were going to turn this around, but silly me, and you know what? It's last season all over again, to be honest. And you know what? Our next Serie A match is against Bologna, and that might not even go our way either because the Serie A slump, in my opinion, is in full effect. The Sassuolo and Torino back-to-back results have epitomized our mediocrity once again. The mental block and a change of uh, emotion in the dressing room. Perisic looks like he's on the way out. Rumours of a rift with Icardi. Uh, Spalletti looks like he's lost the dressing room. You know what? Unless we get a serious reinforcement in January, it looks like we're going to be in for a rough end to the season. Whether or not we achieve our goals, we could end the season with a negative morale. Uh, Bruno is with me tonight. Bruno, how you doing, man? Let's talk Torino. Talk to me, man. Ah, well, look. Firstly, thank God the transfer window ends this week. Now, I feel personally, Serie A should not be played whilst the transfer window is still open, because you've got players who don't know what's happening to them. Should they keep? Should you play hard? Because do you want to leave and stuff like that, or all of that? So I just feel transfer window and matches should not be played at the same time. Now, Anthony, you're 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 you're, you're saying to me that the December curse has moved to January and all of this. Let me ask you, and I'll, you you know why I'm all smiles at the moment. Now, we're in the second half of the season, two games in. Now, two games in into the first half of the season, how many points did Inter get? Two games into the first half of the season? Yeah. One point. Okay. Now, with two games into the second half of the season, how many points has Inter got? One point. Okay. So... We haven't gone backwards per se. All right? <laughs> so we haven't gone backwards. And you know what? A draw against a swallow is an improvement in my eyes. Now, first half of the season, we did not deserve that draw against Torino. You do not give up a 2 0 lead that easily. And I just feel the whole Perisic saga, the whole Icardi mentality, Plus the pressure of all the other games of the weekend. Santos in first versus fifth or sixth place Lazio. Second place Napoli versus fourth place Milan. You had Atalanta and Roma who were seventh and fifth versing each other. So they had to perform. And that pressure of them having to perform, I think, just pushed them over the edge. Now, we came out of the gates firing. And unfortunately, once Torino put that goal in, we never looked to score again. And Martinez should have scored, man. Martinez should have scored in the third minute. He should have scored. Martinez, Martinez should have scored. <laughs> Icardi should have scored. But you know what? I just think... I know you're going to tell me a bit about this, so I'm not going to mention it. But I'll lead you into it, Anthony. What did Spalletti get wrong? Because I haven't got enough fingers to start off and say what he got wrong on the day because this is going to come back to bite us. He did get a few things wrong, man. I think that um, his, his, wing, his wing-back decisions in a 3-5-2, this formation is a good formation. I like it. I don't think it's that as, as outdated as people think. I think if you can get really good attacking wingers to play that 3-5-2, then you're laughing. To be honest, that formation suits Perisic more than it suits any other formation Spalletti's played all season. And it's the one game that we didn't really play him on the field. You're playing like players like Dalbert and Dian Brozio in a wing-back position that holds so much responsibility. So much responsibility in a 3-5-2. It's almost one of the most intricate parts of the entire formation. And that was the first wrong part. The second wrong part, I think, I thought Roger Nangolan was fit to start. Apparently not. If he wasn't fit to start, then that, that's my uh, that's my mistake. Um, the two strikers up front, I have absolutely no problem. I think that Martinez and Icardi have been crying out to play with each other. 
but the other thing is Vestino. Vestino, Vestino is just not 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 my kind of guy. I just don't think he contributes enough and helps in a double pivot to midfield in terms of which you need someone technically to complement him. Doesn't do that. But are they all but that's his mistake? These are the players he's got to work with. But a lot of them are his signings as well. Doug Bert is signing Vestino is his signing. So what do you recommend? I just think, you know what? We just need stability. And I've said that from day dot. But let this provided that stability. But once this transfer window has closed and no one can move anywhere, I feel Inter will get the ball rolling again. And you know what? We've got a massive match this Friday against Lazio, Coppa Italia. What do you think is going to happen there? Look, man, to be honest, I don't think we're going to win. I've seen our club perform, perform perform poorly while they're in good psychological places. And at the moment, I thought we had until Bologna. It wasn't until you reminded me this week that there was Coppa Italia. I'm like, Ninja, there's Coppa Italia. In like, in like a few days, we're not mentally prepared for this. Lazio are more mentally prepared for this. They should have beat Juventus on the weekend. They collapsed as well. And you know what? I'm not going to sit here and whinge that it was the refs because they were, that was a legit pen. And Castillo scored a legit goal. But that's just a difference that separates the winning mentality from the not, from the Juve, from the inside Juve, from the Lazio. And they, they had them for 72 minutes. But they let them go at the end. But you know what? They'll still take some morale high ground from that, that, from that match. And it would not surprise me to see us turn over 2-1, maybe, or 1-0, but for us to be outplayed significantly. So, I hate saying it, you know, plenty of fans that are critical, but what do you reckon? I just don't see it happening. Look, now, I wish I had Lazio's fixtures. They played Juventus and Napoli for the first and second games of the season. They've gotten the tough two teams out of the way. So as a team, mentally, the hard work's done. And they're ready to steamroll forward. And that's where they gain their momentum, after those two matches. Now, Inter, on the other hand, we've faced 12th and 13th place, Torino, Sassuolo, and we've come away with one point. And I just feel going into such an important match, and travelling to Italy's capital, we're not going to perform. And I've said this time and time again, the Kiev will match every time. Inter will always pull a surprise. Now, whenever I've referred to it, it's been in a negative context. Now, here, a win would be a surprise in my eyes. If we come away from this match with a win, it would surprise me. But it's not totally out of character for Inter. I just feel he will play that full formation because you've got to remember, we've got Bologna three days later. We don't have a great deal of time. So not long. If Nyingland's going to play, he needs to start, right? If he's not feeling the best, take him off after 50, 60 minutes. Bring on Mario, right? If, if Martinez is going to play, chuck him on. Now, if we haven't sold Perisic and he's in the squad, play him. Not because he is the difference for us, but because if we want money for him, he needs to play time, games. He can't just sit on a bench because his value will decrease. Now, yeah. it will not be a complete shock if Inter lose. But again, it would not be a complete shock if we come through with the win. I just feel Inter is a type of team that will take the results from Torino, from Sassuolo, and capitalise on it. Because they, they'll they turn that into their, their their profit. And I just, fingers crossed, hope that that's the way it's going to go. Um, our last two fixtures against uh, Lazio, we won in the last game of last season where we qualified for Champions League. We won just before um, mid-season break. So we've got two wins in two games against them. Now, both wins weren't as convincing. Well, sorry, the first win wasn't as convincing. But what did we win second time? 3-0? Three 3-0. Nil? Three nil. Yeah, 3-0. Yeah, it was very yeah. good. So we've got the higher ground on them there. Let's just hope. Fingers crossed. We do get the win. 
But if we don't, Interesti, rest assured, it's not all bad. We've still got the Europa. And even if we get knocked out of Europa, we really need to focus on this Serie A. Because our position, us finishing third this season, will determine which players we get in the transfer market. If we drop outside of that Champions League position, Inter's going nowhere this transfer window. And I can't blame Zhang, I can't blame Marotta, Marotta before Sama edits that. I can't blame Marotta um, because you don't want to go to a club that's not going to be in Champions League. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. That's, that's all for me. Man, I would have to agree with the most part of what you said, and that pretty much wraps up everything Inter for another week. So let's hope that the Ragazzi can pull something out against Lazio because we're crying out for a good performance that we felt at the start of the season and, you know, what we feel deprived of it. But, you know, we're still in a good position at the moment as long as we take advantage of where we are now and move forward. So, Bruno, thanks for coming on, my friend. And that wraps us up for another edition of Everything Inter. As always, ciao. What's say, Inter? Ciao.